The R107 Mission Something woke me from the programmed hypersleep of Mission R107. I felt how my body trembled, like when you are pulled strongly by the arms and lose your balance or have a strong fever. I was in an ergonomic position in the command chair, I still had the electrodes placed on my forehead that monitored my vital signs and the special tubes with the liquids that fed my body to keep it in perfect condition and endure the long trip to the planet R107. According to the studies it was 95% similar to the Earth, I had applied for the two-year trip with the hope of confirming the possibility that the human being can live and thus begin the migration of the Earth. I dreamed of being there with my wife, my children, my brother friends, I imagined us happy and healthy, it was like starting again with a second chance, I told myself that I would not make the same mistakes and that everything would be different, that I would be the best husband, father, brother, and friend of the planet. I looked at the controls and tried to speak to Iliad, the virtual computer hologram that accompanies me on the mission and that would wake me up upon arrival. She didn't answer, I looked around and I saw with concern that the monitors were all turned off, I looked out the window of the ship and I only saw the deep darkness of space, there were no stars, could it be that I strayed from the route? For a moment I felt the worst, something happened on the ship. I tried to reach the emergency button that would activate the auxiliary power batteries, but an unknown force pushed me towards the command chair, preventing me from even moving a finger, even though it was only a few centimeters from my hand, but it was impossible. I thought that the moment had arrived, I had failed in my mission, that all my dreams and illusions were gone, perhaps a meteorite had collided with the ship and damaged the controls. I was running out of oxygen and I hardly felt my breath anymore. And I began to hallucinate, I thought I saw through the window of the ship a very bright constellation, intense, it looked so beautiful, it transmitted me a man's peace. With the little strength I had left I wanted to dictate my last wishes to Iliad, but it was necessary to activate the emergency button, the desire to speak with my family was immense, so I made the greatest effort of my entire life. I just wanted to tell my wife that I loved her, that from the first moment I saw her it was love at first sight, that I loved her smile, her sweet voice, that it was never my intention to hurt her, to forgive me, oh god I loved her so much. I wanted to tell my children that I loved them and that from now on I would be the best father in the world who would never abandon them. To my brothers who loved them and would never speak ill of them that everything would be like when they were children, true brothers and friends forever. I don't know how I was able to reach the emergency button with so little strength left, I just know that I moved my finger and pressed it as hard as I could. I felt as if someone was holding my hand, I heard Lyota's voice saying he's alive. It's alive. It's alive. I thought it was strange that the Lyota hologram had those words in its programming. I tried to open my eyes and I thought I saw the image of my wife projected by the hologram. She was smiling, with eyes full of happiness, it was an unforgettable beautiful image that I still remember very clearly today. I knew then that she had accomplished my mission. She had arrived at my planet R107 after two long years of long journey. Now he could do everything he had dreamed of all this time. She would be a new man on a new planet with a new life because everything was in my mind which can change life. My wife helped me up. I hugged her and kissed her. The doctor looked at me smiling and with a surprised face, the nurses said in a low voice, it's a miracle, my children ran to hug me. I said help me get closer to the window. And I could see the most beautiful planet in the entire universe, the planet where I had always lived, 